I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand at thy gate, O Jerusalem. Even though it's cold, I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord today. Are you excited to be here today? Yes, sir. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap of praise for the worship and how he used them this morning. Today I'm going to be preaching our theme verse for the year. It starts with me. It starts with me. Our text is going to be Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. It starts with me. When I think about it starts with me, I often think about Jesus when he was at the age of 12. At the age of 12. And he and his mother Mary and Joseph went to Jerusalem for the feast, the feast of the Passover, which was common for Jewish families in that day. And after they had celebrated the feast of the Passover, they began to make their journey home to a two, two, two days or a few miles in. Mary and Joseph noticed that Jesus was not with them. Jesus was not with them. I can imagine them frantically beginning to search and try to find out where their baby was. Their state of mind had to be running 100 miles a minute trying to find their baby. They thought that Jesus was with probably some of their relatives or some of their other kindred persons. And so they searched the tribes looking for baby Jesus, but he was nowhere to be found. See, Jesus had stayed behind. He stayed behind. He, unknowingly to his parents, in other words, he didn't have permission to stay behind. He stayed behind. So after Mary and Joseph were circled back and make their way back to Jerusalem, I can imagine them going hut to hut, house to house, looking for their baby Jesus, asking people along the street, have you seen my baby? Have you seen my child? Have you seen Jesus? And finally, they make their way to the temple and there is Jesus, the young man. Sitting to run on scribes and Pharisees and the scholars of the Bible. And I can imagine his mother going up to him, grabbing him by his shoulders and saying, Jesus, why have you done this horrible thing to your father and I? We have been searching for you all over Jerusalem looking for you. We thought someone had kidnapped you, someone had taken you. Why have you done this thing to your father and I? And I have always been amazed by Jesus' response. See, for the first time I read that, I really didn't get it. But you know, when you walk with the Lord, he deposits things into you. He gives you insight. He gives you a little bit more understanding. Oh, come on, somebody. As you read his word, Jesus' response to his mom was, Mom, 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 you should have known that I would be about my father's business. Oh, my God, my God. See, that's deep. Jesus didn't wait for someone else to get started in ministry. He took the initiative. Jesus didn't wait for a committee to be formed to take a vote and elect this person for the job and see who was going to be over and in charge of it. Jesus didn't put it off on the next shift, right, somebody, or make an excuse. Jesus took the initiative, and the big idea today is this. Jesus says, it starts with me. Glory be to God. How many things have not gotten completed or accomplished because we didn't take the initiative to start them and have the courage to see them through to completion? Oh, I feel this thing in my belly today, y'all. Glory be to God. As we excavate our text this morning, we're going to get a glimpse at one of the Lord's prophets. Oh, my God. Who didn't wait on anyone else. He didn't pass the buck. He didn't wait for someone else to start something. He, matter of fact, he nominated himself and he stepped out and stepped in, oh my God, to the work of the ministry for the Lord. Isaiah chapter 6, when you get there, please stand for the reading of the word. Isaiah chapter 6. Starting at verse 1. In 
in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood seraphims. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one called to another. And he said, Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, whom the whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. Sometimes we skip over this the next part. For I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips. We always remember that. And I dwell among a people of unclean lips. Ah, oh, but I like that I am lost. My God. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And the one of the seraphims flew to me. And having in his hand a burning coal, he had taken with tongues from the altar, and he touched my mouth. Ah, oh, and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Watch this. Your guilt is taken away. Your sins are atoned for. Oh, my God, my God, my God. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am. Send me. And he said, Go to this people. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, let your spirit fall fresh in this place today, God. Yes. Father God, give us new wine vats for the new wine that you're about to pour out in this place, Lord. Yes. Father, as we put our chairs up to your table and you begin to break the bread of life and feed us your flock, yes. Father, I say thank you right now, God. Thank you. Thank you. Let your word today, God, be something of substance, yes. something we can hold on to, something we can hide in our heart, God, that we may not sin against you. Something that's going to make us bigger, make us better, make us stronger, make us love harder, make us give more, make us see ourselves for who we truly are. Father, we exalt you this morning in this place. We came to lift up the name of Jesus, and that the name of Jesus, every tongue shall bow, every knee shall confess that Jesus is Lord. So, Father, we surrender to you this morning. Let every heart be open and ready, every mind be clear and steady as we prepare to receive the wonderful, infallible, and courageous word of God. We thank you right now. We give you glory for it. And the wonderful and the majestic name of Jesus and the children of God said, Amen. 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 Give your conquering king a hand clap of praise on your way down. Oh, I feel my help in here now. Yeah. Oh, tell, look at your name and say, He feels his help in here now. Hopefully he don't start running on our road. Because I'm about to show out. Oh my God, my, I feel the spirit of the Lord in this place. Help me, Father. The text says, by the year that King Uzziah died. See, this is important. Because the people love King Uzziah. They love King Uzziah. He reigned over Judea about 52 years. He died somewhere around 740 B.C. They loved King Uzziah. They had lifted him up on the throne. They almost praised him like he was a god because everything was good under King Uzziah. Yeah. They loved him. They worshipped him. They glorified him because see, under King Uzziah, the land was prosperous. He made war and weapons of war. He had great victories over the Philistines and the Arabians. Uh, trade was up. People was taking care of their families. He restored Judah. Life and functionality of living was good and prosperous. So they loved King Uzziah <laughs> till he was no more. Till he was no more. 
when he died, the throne became empty and chaos pursued it. Oh, Isaiah goes on to say, I saw the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. The first thing I was able to extrapolate from this text is this, and this is what I need you to see. We have to have the right view of who God is. Amen. Amen. We have to have the right view of who God is. Isaiah saw him high and lifted up. See, he is holy. He is pure. He is undefiled by sin. He is your strong tower. He is your grace. He is your mercy. He is your help. My God, he is your compassion. He is your love. He is your energy. He is your inner man and your outer man. He is everything to all people. You have to have the right view of who God is. Yes, Lord. The creator of heaven and earth yes, and everything, get it? Genesis, oh my God, chapter 1, verse 7 says, And he breathed into the nostrils breath of life, and man became a living creature. See, this is the God that called dead things to life. Yes, Can anybody do that? This is the God that called dead things to life. You got to know who you're worshiping. You got to know who's in control. You got to know who's serving. He's the architect of our lives, the author and the finisher of our faith. See, you can't put him in the concept that you have in your mind because that concept that you have in your mind have borders. Right. Yes. Right. The God that I serve don't have any borders. Right. Don't you know the God that I serve, my God, he doesn't sit in time and space. Time and space sits inside of him. You better understand who you're serving. Yes. Yes, Lord. You can't put limits on this God. No. If you can think it, it ain't big enough. There you go. If you can imagine it, it ain't creative enough. Come on, somebody. If you can do it, oh, it ain't big enough for God. Right. No. You've got to know who you're serving and have the right view who he is. Because when we got the right view of who he is, bro, we go to him with reference. See, if you don't know who God is, you won't have the reference that you need to get into his presence. You've got to have the right view of who he is. Isaiah said, I saw him high and lifted up. Mm. My God, my God, my God. See, the view that you have of God will determine how you worship him. Amen. How you serve him. Yes. And more importantly, how you trust him. Yes, Oh, come on, somebody. Can I talk to this side of the room? The view of who he is will determine how you trust him. Because if you don't have the right view he is, you ain't going to trust him with everything. If you got the wrong view of God, then I, I, I trust him with my children, but I don't trust him with my finances. Oh, let me go over here. Because you don't have the right view of who he is. Because when you got the right view of who he is, you trust him. With everything. Amen. How can we say, I trust him with my children, but I don't trust him with my money? Right. Oh, that's true. How can we say, I trust him with my heart, but I don't trust him in his word? Yes. Amen. That's true. Do you believe he is who he said he is? Yes. yes. Do you live like he is who he said he is? Yes. Do you trust him when your back is against the wall and things are looking gloomy you're in a trial or tribulation you don't know what's coming left and right can't you stand in the middle of your mess when things are collapsing around you and trust him because that's the God I serve y'all I told him in Bible study see I like my Jesus straight no chaser right. give it to me like it is bump everybody else I need that Right. Oh, you better come. You better hear what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Because see, that's how he communicates with me. I don't need no fluff, brother Les. I don't need you dressing it up. I don't need you putting a lips, putting lipstick on it and calling it a pig. Yeah. Right? I need it straight. Yes. I need the word of God straight from the head. Yes. See, the problem is sometimes we don't like that. That's true. That's true. Come on. 
it gets in the way of our lifestyle. Yes. And more so of who our view of who we want to think Jesus is. Mm. My God, my God. See, they loved King Uzziah. They had him on a pedestal. They glorified him. They worshiped him. Hell, things was good. Everybody was free. Everybody, you know how we say they was eating. Yeah. yeah. Everybody was eating under King Uzziah. Watch this. Sometimes, hear me when I say this, I need you to lean in because you need to get this. Sometimes, God has to remove the idol that you serve so you can see the true king. He said, oh, they're worshiping King Uzziah. They think he's a god. They glorify. Let me get him out of the way so they can see me in my splendor. Yes. So they can see me in my holiness. What is in your life uh, that you ain't willing to give up to worship the true God. Sometimes you got to give up something to see who God really is. Amen. He had to remove King Uzziah out of the equation so they could serve him. Amen. Because the truth of the matter is without him there will be no king of life. Amen. Amen. Brother, that's we can get so caught up on the stuff yeah. and forget the person who provided the stuff. Amen. So caught up on the blessings and forget the blessing. Yes, right. You better remember who God is. Yes. And one thing I know for sure says is that he says he's a just God. Yes, yes. yes. I didn't say it. It's in the book. It's in the book. I think he says, I am a jealous God, and there will be no other gods before me. What's in your life that has become an idol that's getting in the way of you worshiping the one true God? Mm -hmm. Help me, Holy Spirit. My God, my God, my God. He looked at King Uzziah. Said, "Oh, they're worshiping him. They glorified him. They got him up on the pedestal, mm -hmm. and he gave him an old Robin Williams line. Y'all know the you don't act like I'm the only one to watch Robin Williams. Mm -hmm. He said, "Gotta go, gotta go." <laughs> he had to get on the body. Then. Second thing I need you to know is this. A true encounter with God can shake you to your core. A true encounter with God can shake you to your core. Say, Pastor is working on something. Isaiah saw the truth for the very first time and it shook him. It caused him to see himself, and guess what? He didn't like what he saw. He didn't like what he saw. The truth of God causes us to confront our sin. Amen. It will cause you to look in the mirror and examine yourself and where you at, and you come face to face with your own mess. And now it's decision time. Amen. Let me say it again. It's decision time. Because Jesus would not allow you to be on the fence about him. Amen. Can I come over here? Yeah. When you're confronted with the true Christ, you're going to make a decision yeah. about who he is, yeah. who you are. Yeah. He forces us to. Yeah. Yeah. I think he says, do not be moved. Is, is, yeah. yeah. is that what the word says? Yeah. Is that what it says? Yeah. It said, I will spew you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Speak you out. Speak you out. He forces us to make a decision of who he is, watch this, to us. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, my God, my God. The Bible says in John chapter 1, glory be to God, that grace and truth comes through Jesus. Amen. When we encounter him, we're faced with the truth of ourselves and who he is, forces us to make a decision. And then he says in John 8, you know the verse and the truth that you know. Come on, somebody. 
will set you free. Yes, it will. That you know. Right. That you know. That you know will set you free. The truth that you know will set you free. Yeah. What do you know to be true? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Look at your name and say, there's freedom in Jesus. Yes. When you encounter God, you have to repent. You have to choose who he is. Yes. The Bible says that if a man does not repent, God will wet his sword and he has been irradiated his bow, which means he's in the ready position. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's in the ready position. Yeah. Searching for the target. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I didn't say it. It's in the Bible. Right. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Because he wants you to make a decision right. about him. Right. Look, y'all. Paul's encounter with Jesus changed everything. Amen. But he was Saul then, though. You know. Right. He was Saul then. Yeah. It changed everything. Saul was on his way to Damascus to persecute more Christians and Jesus knocked him off his horse and blinded him to get his attention. Yeah. 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 He sitting in a limb with a cat that he did not know. Yeah. For a few days. Yeah. So he didn't get his head right. Yeah. Sometimes he hit you in the back of your head so you can get your head right. That's right. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. I done had a few hits. Come on over here. I need to talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. Come to the principal's office. Yeah. We need to have a, converse, a conversation. Yeah. Because I got to get your mind right. Right now you're somewhere. I need to get you right. <laughs> he had to get Saul right. And guess what? It changed everything. It didn't even changed his name. <laughs> I will give you a name. Oh, he went from Saul to Paul. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. See, Saul and Paul did two different things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's your assignment. Go find out what Paul means. Come on, somebody. It means two different things. It changed everything. Changed his, we was talking this morning, his moral yeah. perspective. Yes, yes. Because when he was Saul, he would drag you out of your crib, yeah. take you in the middle of the street, yeah. and do something to you. Oh, yes, he would. He would do something to you. Till he met Jesus. Some of y'all was the same way. Oh, don't act like he wasn't a car carrying member. Drag someone out their car, out their house, and do something to him. Oh, come on, somebody. Some of y'all still have flashbacks. Oh, come on. You wouldn't always who you were. You were like, okay, you got the right one right now. <laughs> Let me show you something. Oh, come on. Some of you brothers was like, oh, you don't know who you're talking to. <laughs> I would take you and eat your young. <laughs> you know I'm right about it. Until you had an encounter. Thank God I had an encounter with Jesus. Because I was riding back. Thank God I had an encounter with Jesus. Mm. And sometimes, sometimes I, I get food and then, oh, get out of there. Right. Don't, you, don't you grab him. Right. You better hear what I'm saying. Come on. An encounter with Jesus has this everything. See, true salvation corrects your moral compass and challenges your ethical code. It allows you to see your fellow neighbor as your brother and sister. Amen. That's what salvation does. It helps you to understand the power of forgiveness and deepens your ability to truly love and build a desire to watch this to worship the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. When we have an encounter with God and we come to recognize who he is and what he is and what he's done in our life, it gives us a desire to worship him yes. Yes. for what he's done. Yes. For what he's done. Some of us, he saved us from ourselves. Yes. Some of us, he is still saving. Yes. Amen. Oh, come on. Amen. Thank God that he's still saving. Some of us is under construction right now. 
You know it. Yeah. We got building permits in our spirit because God is doing some reconstructing. Yes. Yes. Right now. Yeah. Right now, as we sitting here, standing here in the spirit of God, yes. he's working on us. Yes. Yes. And I'm so thankful. Absolutely. So thankful. Yes. Building upon that encounter that we had with him. Yes. And because we're so grateful yeah. for what he's done, yes. we want to say praise the Lord. All day. Thank you, Lord. Father, I got up this morning to worship you. Yes. Father, I live to worship you. Yes. Oh, Father, got everything in my body wants to worship you. Yes. Sometimes I don't even want to go to work. I just want to lay out in your presence yes. and say glory to your name, Lord God. Sometimes I just need to worship you. Yes. 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 God redemptive power and we start learning this in verse 6 God redemptive power removes your sin your guilt and your shame if God has removed it why are you still holding on to it Isaiah your guilt your sin is atoned for Amen. Why are you still bringing up old headlines? Yes, Reading old press clippings about yourself, and God has already called somebody. Yes. Remove that guilt. Amen. You know what I think the problem is? Yes. Y'all want to hear it? Yes. Now, this is fast obvious. Yes. This is true. Y'all sure y'all want to hear it? Come on. Yeah. Some of you just like drama. Hey, yes. <laughs> Did that just come out of my mouth? Yes. <laughs> Some of us just like drunk. Yeah, that's God done forgot about that thing. Yeah. He done moved on down the road. Told you to forget about it, but you still want to set up shop, put up a pub tent, a coffee stand, and have a latte. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to live there. Yeah. Why? Because it's drunk. It's action. You're excited to that. It's adrenaline for you. The devil is a liar. You need to get it down and move on. I don't know who I'm talking to. But there's somebody amongst my voice that needed to hear that. God has released you to move on. You need to move on. Because if you don't move on, guess what's going to happen? Can I tell you? Yes, you're going to be out of position. Yes. And when you're out of position, you're going to miss, they're going to miss this, what God has for you. Because you ain't where you're supposed to be. You back here. And you should be over yonder. God is here. Waiting to bless you, wanting to bless you. Got something to give you that's going to increase you in stature. But you're stuck. Yeah. And you're out of position. Mm -hmm. And if he can't bless you, he's going to bless someone else. Amen. 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 It's in the Bible. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name, 1 Chronicles 16, and bring an offering and come before him, worshiping the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Uh, let it go, let it go, let it go. Start seeing yourself the way God sees you. Start seeing yourself the way God sees you. I feel like I need to say that one more time. Start seeing yourself the way God sees you. He sees you as a child. Yes, Lord. Each and every one of us are a child of the living God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And he loves, loves, loves his children. Yes, yes he, he does. does. Yes, he does. Love yourself. Yes. See that he loves you. Yes, he does. I'm not talking about no new weight scientific kind of love who you are. Love who God has made you. Walk in what he's called you to do. Yes. Don't be a doormat. Amen. Love yourself. Amen. Amen. We were 
worthy of the sacrifice for his son. Yes, Lord. Right. Amen. Do I need to say that again? He found us worthy yes, to sacrifice his son for you and for me. If that's not love, Amen. what kind of love is that? This radical, unconventional kind of love that he, for you and for me. Love yourself enough worthy of the sacrifice. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, Live a life that's holy and yes. acceptable unto him. Amen. Right? Amen. It's not about, you know, it's not about my circle. It's about Jesus. Right? You have an audience of one, yes. Jesus. Amen. Now, they may benefit from your relationship with Jesus, and that's okay. But you're living for God. Don't fool yourself. Amen. Amen. You ain't living for me. You ain't living for the church. You ain't living for Mama and them. I, I ain't no Uncle Pookie. You know, at the barbecue. You know that. You're living for Jesus. Amen. Amen. That is the guiding post, the true north of your decision making. Yes, yes. We make it complicated, and it's really simple. Mm -hmm. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus say? This is how I'm living. Yes. What does the Bible say? This is how I'm living. Amen. Amen. Start seeing yourself the way God sees you as a child of God. Yes, the last thing I got for you, I'm gonna let you go. I won't be for you long, but I'm trying to be strong. Our mess doesn't negate our mission. Amen. Our mess doesn't negate our mission. Look, Isaiah knew he had issues. He said, Woe is me. That's enough right there. They said, I got, some, I got some situations going on. <laughs> Woe is me. I am lost. I have no clue what I'm doing. Right. Yeah, Matter of fact, I don't know where I've been. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just flat out lost. Matter of fact, I'm so lost that GPS can't even help me. I'm lost. I need Jesus. Yes, Lord. See, that's the first one. Is realizing the first step is realizing that you need a savior. Amen. That's it. Amen. Realize that you can't do this by yourself, Amen. that you need a savior. Amen. I said, I'm lost. Yes, Lord. Woe is me because I don't have a clue what's going on. I tried to read the, the vine feed and the twin feed, and I still don't know. Amen. I lift it up in the dictionary, I'm more confused than ever. I don't know what's going on. Yes, I'm lost. Woe is me. He knew he had issues, issues enough to, huh. so matter of fact, it's not just me. It's me and all my people. Yes. Right. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Yes. It's me and all my people. Matter of fact, I dwell with some folk there you go. that just as crazy, yes. just as lost, just as confused as I am. Yes. Now, I, I, I'm putting it the way that only I can put it, but y'all know what I'm saying. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. My God, my God. He knew his life was messy. We all have some things in our lives that we're not proud of. The key is, the key is, how do we respond to those things? Because you're responding, whether you know it or not. Yes. Are you responding by faith? Are you still living in your guilt? Are you responding by doubt? How are you responding? Because you're responding. Not doing nothing is responding. Yes. You're responding whether you like it or not. I just prefer to respond by faith. <laughs> what I need to know is that if you have given your life to Christ and you truly believe that he is forgiving your sin, then you, my friend, has experienced this grace. You need to respond by faith. Amen. Amen. By faith. I'm lost. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going to trust you, God. Yes, Lord. You may send me to a place that I don't know. Okay, I'm packing my bags. I'm going. Yes. Because I trust you, God. Yes, yes. He, this is not nothing new. He's done it before. Amen. Amen. Go to a place where I will show you. Amen. Did he not say that? Yes. Who did he say it to? Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. 
You can enter into a season and you don't know the outcome. The problem is that we don't have enough faith to trust God for the outcome. Amen. We want to try to have it. We want to try to map it out and know where we're going to end up. Right. You know. So it's got to be Right? Am I right about it? Yes. Some of us got control issues. Yes, yes. So we need to know the end, you know, for the beginning. But yes. well, there's only one who knows the end for the beginning. Yes. And his name is Jesus, y'all. Yes. I'm sorry to tell you. Yes. That's what faith is all about. Yes. It's trusting him when you can't see him. Yes. Right? Yes. Trusting him when you can't feel him. Yes. When he's got you on the backside of the mountain yes. for a few years. Yeah. In the desert. But trust me. Amen. Amen. I've been to the desert. Yes. And I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it, y'all. Amen. Huh? I don't like it. I'm just lost in the desert. Right. I look around and all the mountains look alike. Everything is sandy. Get all in your clothes. I don't like it. I'm too neat for that. Guys be crazy. Right. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't even like clothes. We got three books on the table. That's one too many. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just talking about me. I don't like being lost. Not because I don't like it don't mean I won't spend some time there. Huh? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Don't mean that I'll stop trusting it. Yeah. I may be complaining a little bit. Right, right, right. That's true. That's true. Just being honest. That's true. I don't like it. Now some of y'all may come accustomed to it. Some of y'all okay with being all idling on yourself and you know, just give me a good knowledge to you know be fine. I like folk. I like people. More or less, I like Jesus. I like him talking to me and sharing with me. So when I'm in that desert place and I don't have that correspondence with God, it just drives me crazy. Yeah. I don't like deserts. I spent enough time in those in the military. I don't like it. <laughs> Walking in his grace means that you are living for him. You can't allow the messiness of the flesh to stop you from the mission. Amen. Amen. The messiness of the flesh. What are you talking about? Wrong attitude, selfish desires, love of the flesh, lust of sin, past sins. All that stuff is messiness. Yes. And it can stop you from the mission of God if you're not careful. Amen. We all have some shape, form of it. But we can't let that stop us from doing what God is supposed to do. Right. I stood here last Sunday going to Big Reveal and I said that most of the time people don't disciple because they're scared of their own bones that may fall out their bones. Mm -hmm. The skeletons that stiff, you know. That stuff we got in the corner, Brother Jesse, that we don't want nobody to see. Right. We got it all in Pandora's box, you know right. what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> right. So, you know, it's better to risk the fact that someone's seeing that we just don't disciple at all. Right. Right. But me and Brother Les talking, we came to the conclusion that you learn more what not to do. Yeah. Just as good as you learn what to do, right? Yeah. Right? I don't learn from other folks' less. Yeah. I was like, oh, I was like, no, you don't want that. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep all that over there. Yeah. But that doesn't mean I let that person stop from speaking into my life. Yeah. Because I learned just as much as not my God. The messenger, the messenger is a man or a woman. Yeah. But it's the message from God. That's what yeah. 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 The message from God you need to receive. Yeah. Don't get caught up in the mess in there, why? Because we all got mess. It's just different shapes and forms and colors and smells and all that kind of stuff. It's all nasty, it's all vile. Yeah, I said that. It's what it is. But it's the message. Scriptural? Yeah. Is it biblical? Mm -hmm. Is it what God said? And if that's the case, I would see that all day long. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Too many times we want to throw the mess out with the messenger. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Come on, somebody. Right. Yeah. I learned what to do and what not to do from the same person, and, and it was a good thing. <laughs> so don't let your mess stop you from having the tendency. Right. Oh, come on, somebody. Right. Y'all know what I mean by Timothy, right? We're yeah. talking about that. We all need a Timothy. Yeah. Don't let your mess stop you from having a Timothy or a Barnabas. Yeah. Or maybe you are a Paul or need a Paul. We need those too. Yeah. 
I love the Pauls in my life because they're constantly challenging me to grow. Matter of fact, I'm working on one of those challenges right now. You know, I'm, go. I'm working on it because God is working on it. As I am here today. Don't let the mess stop you from the mission. God has to do it. The message does not negate your mission because what God has done through the finished work of Jesus, we now have transformed lives. And that is what we need to honor with the work and service of his mission. Yeah, I used to be that. I used to do that. But this is who God has made me now. Oh my God. Fierce. A product of the line of Judah. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm God's man. I, I may not always look like it, but once you begin to talk to me and my heart begin to open, my God, this is God's man. Yeah, yeah. I am God's man. I believe that. In every way in my life, I'm God man in marriage. I'm God's man as a father. I'm God's man with my children. I'm God's man with my children. God's man in the church. I'm God's man. This is who I am. I cannot compartmentalize no. who I am. That's right. I am God's man. And I believe that. Because if I didn't believe that, I couldn't do this. Amen. Amen. What do you believe about you? See, I believe it because God said it. Right. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. He said it to so. you too. Amen. I need to take you. I will be your God and you will be my people. Amen. That's right. That's what do you say? Amen. Not you're going to be my people when you feel like it. No. Or you're going to be my people when you're doing the right thing. No. Mm -hmm. You're his people in all of your best. Amen. Come on, somebody. I believe that about me. You need to believe it about you. Because when you begin to believe that about you, uh -huh, you begin to change. Amen. There's a shifting. There's a shifting. You walk more towards the light than the dark. You know, your perspective starts to change. You yes, see Lord. things a little bit more differently. You love a little bit harder. Yeah, see, yeah. oh my God, there's something said for loving harder. You love a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus is love, and you understand that. Amen. Right. Amen. You love the unlovable. Yeah. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm sure a name is popping in your head right now. Yeah. That's someone that's hard to love. And you got to figure out a way to love them anyhow. Yes. Come on, somebody. See, we got to be honest. There's freedom in honesty. Amen. There's respect in honesty. Yes. There's honor in honesty. Yes. Let your yay be yay and your no be no. Yes. Tell the truth. Ain't nobody going to take you out to the woodshed. You are grown. See, I was going to say something right there. <laughs> God's working on me. You're grown. Come on, somebody. Grown men, grown women. Ain't nobody going to take you to the woodshed. Come on, somebody. It's his grace. Made us who we are. And I'll close with this. What Isaiah wants you to see, and I believe what the Spirit of God wants us to know, that when it comes to his business, we have to have, have to take, have to own our ownership of the role within his master plan. Amen. As Bible believing, faith walking, spirit filled, sold out worshipers, holy living, prayer seeking people of God, we have to understand in ministry, there's no passing the buck. It starts with us. It starts with you and it starts with me. With every action, every deed, every word spoken, that's where ministry starts. You don't have to go get the deacon, the elder, the candlestick maker, the butcher, the baker, none of those folks. It starts with you. I am a little bit. <laughs> it starts with us. Truly starts with us.
Prayer starts with us. Worship starts with us. Sacrifice starts with us. Revival starts with us. Discipleship starts with us. It starts with us. As an individually, then collectively as a group. Are you hearing me? There's one thing for me to pray in my prayer closet. It's another thing when me and Brother Les and, and Calvin and Curtis and Darren and Jesse get together and we start praying together. Now there's power there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Amen. Right. Why is that? Yeah, there's power alone, but there's more power there. Because the Bible says when two or three are gathered, touching and agreeing. This is why corporate prayer is impossible. If we want God to move, we got to come together corporately and pray. Amen. Are you hearing? Nothing shakes the, the nothing shakes the foundation of the kingdom like corporate prayer. Yes. One heart, one voice, one love, one adoration, one faith, one baptism, all going up to heaven through the voices of many. I hope y'all receive it today. Because yes. God knows I did. I've been receiving it all week. Because he's good like that, y'all. Yes, he, he is so, so good. Yes, he is. Lord, I come.